Let's go, physics people. This is another question for my physics final exam. And so I'm going to try to finish this off. I have two more questions. Um, and I just want to solve the problems. And again, these are based on problems I've seen before. Uh, but I made them original just so that they're, they're different. Uh, so let's just get started. So here we have a human. It's not, it's not an alien. It's a human. Human. Uh, with the mass of 80 kilograms jumping straight up. At the beginning of the jump, the center of the mass is 55 centimeters above the ground. And then right when the human leaves the ground, it's 66 centimeters above the ground, 0.66 meters. And then after jumping the highest point is 1.1 meters above the ground, what's the average force the floor exerts on the human during this jump? And what's the decrease in internal energy for this jump? So this is a, I, I really like this problem. Um, it, I, I know that it's kind of hard to picture it from right here, but I've actually done a problem like this in class before, so I didn't want to draw a picture, and I'll draw the picture for you now, and then I'll tell you why it's a great problem. So let's just, let's just draw this problem. Here's three positions. Okay, position one. And, and one of the things that's really important is to practice drawing stick figures. Uh, so here's the center mass right there this right when they start jumping and then here is them standing the human standing up and there's the center of mass a little bit higher and then finally the third position up here highest point okay so we'll call this y1 y2 y3 and then I'll just write down y1 was what was it? 55 centimeters, 0 0.55 meters. Y2 was 0 0.66 meters. Y3 was 1.1 meters. And then the mass was 80. And then G, I'll write it as a vector, 0, negative 9.80 newtons per kilogram. That's going to be important. Okay, so there's, there's that. So we want to find the force that the floor exerts on the human. Okay, so during this time right here, why does the, the person starts at rest? And right here, they're moving with some velocity upward. I'll call that V2. And then here, they're, they're stationary again. So in order to go from a zero velocity to some velocity, there had to be some force pushing them up. So during this time interval, there's the gravitational force from the floor, Mg, from the Earth, I'm sorry. And then the upward force from the floor, Ff. And that's what we want to find, that force the floor exerts on the, on the person. And the person exerts on the floor. They're the same. Equal and opposite forces. So this kind of problem is really, you know, you, we have two big ideas, right? We have momentum principle. F net is the change in momentum over the change in time. That looks good because we have forces and we're trying to find a force. And then we have the work energy principle. Work equals, I'll just write this as F dot delta R equals a change in energy. And which one should we use, right? Which one should we use? Um, this one deals with time. This one does not. And so I don't want to use this because I don't know the time. And so I could, I could use it but it's going to turn out to be a lot more work than I want to. So I'm actually going to use this. Now, if I use this, I have to declare my system. So let's say my system is the point particle system of the human. Now, this is really important because we have two types of systems. We have point particle and we have real. In the point particle system, PPS, the work done is F dot delta R center of mass. In the real system, the work done is F dot delta R F. It's how far the force moves. This is how far the center of mass moves. And you'll notice in this case, those two things are different, right? Because going from here to there, the work done by the floor in the point particle system, the center mass does move, but the force doesn't actually move. It's applied at the feet, and the floor doesn't move. So in the real system, the, there's no work done. In the point particle system, there is. Now, the other difference is in the point particle system, you can only have a, a change in kinetic energy, 
where kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if I use the real system, then the force on the floor doesn't show up because it doesn't do any work. So I want to use the point particle system. So let's use that and let's go from position one to position three. So I'm going to say the work done is going to be the work done by gravity. I'll call that FWG plus W floor is going to be the change in kinetic energy. So this is going to be equal to uh, the work done by gravity going from one to three. Okay, that's going to be the gravitational force mg dot the displacement. So delta r13 is going to be equal to 0, y3, 0, minus 0, y1, 0. So the displacement is going to be y3 minus y1. The gravitational force is in the y direction. In the negative y direction, right? It's going to be m times this is going to be negative mg in the y direction. So the work done by gravity is going to be negative m times uh, y3 minus y1. So it is a o times g. So it is a negative value, right? That does negative work. As the person goes up, uh, it de the gravitational force decreases the energy of the person. So that's that. Now what about the work done by the floor? That's going to be the force of the floor times the displacement going from 1 to 3, which is going to be y2 minus y1. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. See, notice these are two different distances. And the change in kinetic energy is going to be the k3 minus k1, but guess what? Both of those are 0, right? The person starts at rest, the person ends at rest, so these are equal to 0. Now I can use this to solve for the force of the floor. So the force of the floor let's just call it FF times Y2 minus Y1 equals add that to the other side MG Y3 minus Y1 divide both sides by Y2 minus Y1 and I get the force of the floor the magnitude I don't get the actual vector value is going to be MG Y3 minus Y1 over Y2 minus Y1 now I can put my values in let's see if I have room it's going to, I'm going to leave off the units 80 G is 9.8, and then Y3 is 1.1 minus 5, 0.55. He just squeezed it in, divided by Y2, which is 0.66 minus 0.55. Now let's put that in my calculator, and I, I'm going to. I'm not using Python just because I, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to have to get off the computer. So I'm use my RPN calculator, which I really like. And so I'm just going to enter all this stuff in, 80, enter, 9.8 times. Now I need to subtract this, so I'm going to say 1.1, enter, and then 0.55 minus. And now I have that number, and I can multiply it by that other stuff. Yes, you could probably do that in your head, times. Now I'm going to subtract these two, 0.66, enter, 0.55 minus 0.11, I knew that, and then divide, and I get... 3920 newtons which is greater than the gravitational force which is just as a as a rough estimate right if the mass is 80 kilograms the gravitational force would be about 800 newtons and so you do need a greater force from the floor pushing up in order to make the person accelerate up so that that's good if it was less than 800 that'd be bad okay now we have Part two of the question says, what's the change in internal energy for the human? Now, I can't get that from the point particle system. So now I'm going to need to use the real system. Real of, let's just say, um, let's say, should I say the human? Mm, human plus the earth or just the human? Because if I have the Earth in there, then I'll have a change in gravitational potential energy. Uh, let's just do that, plus Earth. So now, again, let's go from position 1 to 3. Uh, because I don't care about the speed, right? I don't care about that at all. So now I can say the work is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy plus the change in internal energy. I can't have these if I have a point particle system, but if it's a real system, I can have those. Okay. So what forces do work? 
Well, I have the floor exerting a, a force on the person, and it does no work, right? Because the work done by the floor is going to be F floor dot delta R force. And the force doesn't move, so this is zero. And the gravitational force doesn't do any work because I have a change in gravitational potential energy. So that means I have zero is the change in kinetic energy. I'll say that is K3 minus K1 plus the change in potential energy U3 minus U1 plus delta E internal. Okay, so I'm trying to solve for that. I already know the change in kinetic energy is zero. So I just say zero equals uh, the gravitational potential energy is M g y3 minus m g y1 plus delta e internal so delta e internal is going to be equal to subtract this from both sides and i get uh, m g i'll just factor this out y1 minus y3 now i can put that in i get 80 times 9.8 times 1 point i'm sorry yeah, 0.55 minus 1.1. And I put that in my nice little calculator here. So I get 80, enter 9.8 times. Then I get 0.55, enter 1.1 minus times. And I get negative 431 joules. And that's the decrease in internal energy for the person. That's how many Wheaties they had to eat in order to make that jump. And there you go.